Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglodytes Guitar Show. Let's take a look at the guitar market tonight. We'll start off here with a few interesting ones just listed by Chicago Music Exchange. Starting with this one from 2015, this is a made-to-measure custom-ordered Black Burst Les Paul Standard built to kind of 58 reissue specs. This finish caught my attention because it's close to Cobra Burst, but not exactly. And it's not what you normally find on an R8, so I thought it was worthwhile sharing. The nickel pickup covers are definitely starting to show their age. The only thing I don't really like about this is the wood grain right here. It makes it look so dark. I'm sure Gibson didn't actually mess up the burst job. It's just the angle of the wood grain. Well, maybe not. <laughs> maybe if you hold the guitar differently and not just these angles. But once you see that, you, you kind of can't unsee it. And now this one. I clicked on this guitar because that looks so 80s to me. But now that I'm looking at this even closer, we've got the Tim Shaw PAF stickers on here. I think somebody at CME made a mistake. There's no way this is a 1995. No way at all. I mean, even if somebody swapped out the pickup rings and had Tim Shaw's in it, I refuse to believe this is a 95. But let's go ahead and check this out. So a two-piece quilty maple top. Nashville style bridge. We've got a light brown back. It's got the pearl tip tuners. Yeah, this has to be an 80s model. Yeah, somebody messed up. This is a 1985. They must have read that as a nine instead of an eight. But what's very weird about this is it has those tuners. I thought you could only find these on certain 335s's. I guess it's possible they used them on other stuff or somebody has just replaced these because they just happen to fit the original footprint. However, for an 85, that's kind of uncommon to even find this style of tuner. Usually for the standards, they were mainly back to the Clusons by this point in time, but not impossible. Whoa, this quilt top is very active. Like this looks fantastic, right? The leading shot, it's a little lackluster. But if you can demonstrate that just in photos, man, just imagine how that looks in person. Looks like a little bit of arm wear here. They even have the original chainsaw case. I would say it wouldn't surprise me if this was some sort of a custom order, because I mean the two-piece top, the special tuners, but we don't have a custom shop edition decal back here, so maybe not. Well, let's see, do they have a price like a 1995? Kind of, I mean, that price is not that bad. <sighs> Excuse me? Eight pounds, eight ounces? There's no way that's eight and a half pounds. Well, I guess it is 85. They did start weight relieving, but even then, you, you never find that. There's gotta be more of a story to this one. Saying there's a crack in the top between the bridge volume and tone controls. I was hoping that was just a scratch, but yep, I can see it. That's not gonna cause you any issues, but it is something to think about. You might take that to somebody just to get it touched up a little bit if you don't like it. This is really tempting to buy. I mean, eight and a half pounds for a Norland era? I mean, this is technically right at the end of the Norland era. I'll put a link in the description to this one. Continuing on here with interesting colors. Here's, here's a custom shot from 2005. It's just a green finish. You don't see that too often. And I really like that flame top, despite not normally liking heavy pinstripes. Maybe it's just the lighting or the combination of the knobs. I don't normally like the reflectors, but that works really well on that finish with the gold hardware. But it looks like the back is just black and it's listed at five grand. I do want to share this thing. This was listed by Dave's Guitar Shop a day or two ago with the title of Gibson L5 CES, Cutaway Electric Spanish, Gold Sparkle 1992. Let's take a look at this thing. Now at first, I wasn't all that impressed. It just kind of looks like way too much stuff is going on. But trust me, the deeper we dig into this, the more you're gonna like it. As far as the body goes, natural spruce top, basic stuff here. You've got the typical wooden floating bridge. You get the bound F-holes, multi-bound even, and a regular style tailpiece. However, if you zoom in here, you can start to see a flower with some vines coming out of it. That's looking nice. And the pickguard has a similar thing going on, and it looks like somebody put a cork back there to, you know, make sure that this is completely level. But where this thing gets the gold sparkle name from is they've kind of taken a line from Gretsch and they've done this whole gold sparkle binding pretty much along everything. And let me tell you, it's going to get crazy. I'm, I'm surprised they didn't actually gold and sparkle around here. That's how crazy this is going to get. Because they've even got it all the way up here on the headstock. Again, you get some abalone flowers with the stems and vines coming off in Mother of Pearl, it looks like. 
Personally, I don't like the look of these early 90s Gibson art guitars. They do so much on the headstock, they start to look fake. Maybe it's because I'm so used to not seeing, you know, other colors on the headstock that it makes it look so small and pointed. But I've never been a huge fan of those. But this right here is the angle that made me start to go, okay, I bet this would look fantastic in person. Because not only do they have the golden sparkles running up along your fretboard, including all the multiply binding and the other inlays, they've got it along the neck. So that's one, two, three, four, maybe five ply binding right there, plus the ones inside of here. And then they cap both sides off with golden sparkle. This really shows what Gibson can create if budget is not an issue because they even did this with the body. Now, granted, they didn't cap off this side. I think they just wanted to make that look a little bit more traditional, but they capped off the inside edge of both sides here with all the binding like this. this you might as well just be binding instead of a guitar. <laughs> <laughs> That's just how much of that golden sparkle that they threw on this particular one. But is that where this one ends? It's just a way too crazily ornate neck with a fancy pick guard and just kind of, you know, a basic body from the front. Not really, because the back is a little bit more modest, a little bit more to my tastes. It's just kind of a, a pinstripey flame, so that means they went with maple back here. I'm sure the sides are also flamed. But take a look at this. We get some artisan carving back here that they also done up in a golden sparkle paint. That looks pretty good in my opinion. I know heel carvings aren't for everyone because technically, yes, it is going to make it harder to play when you're up here, but let's face it, this is more so an art guitar. But I really like the choice of this five piece maple neck. Three pieces maple, two pieces walnut. It's nice and flame. They didn't do anything, you know, too, too crazy back here. I love these style of tuners because they're mainly associated in the 70s, but you can still find them up until the 90s and early 2000s on certain arch top models. So a modest back with a little bit of ornateness right here and a front that just got a little bit too crazy. But you know, as a nice display piece, it'll be great for someone. They're asking $18,995. They've listed it as very good condition, but if you're sad thinking that this thing has probably never been played in its life, as soon as I can find that photo, if we zoom in right here, I think it has been played. As <laughs> strange as it sounds, it's either that or this is just aging really weirdly and, and the lacquer's starting to chip off. But you can see a white area right here, which normally indicates somebody's thumb has really been rubbing against that area and the lacquer has come off. You can also tell it might not have been in properly humidity controlled areas for its entire life because you do have a little bit of fret sprout cracking going on. And, I, and when I mean its entire life, I'm talking its entire life. If you ship a guitar, sometimes you'll get those. Pretty much every Gibson will have some sort of a binding crack eventually, unless, unless it's led the absolute perfect life. I only mention it because this is an art guitar and any little cosmetic defect on a guitar like this can normally make buyers go, huh? Do I want to buy that one or not? And I suppose we can talk about one last one today. So this is advertised as a 2011 one-off custom build, not custom shop. And when I was first looking through this, it's like, uh, oh, okay. It, it's got binding on the body, but not the neck. We've got some sort of a P90 pickup in here, something from the P90 family with chrome top covers. Not a big fan of that look, honestly. And the chrome knurled knobs. I think this would look much better with just the regular plastics and a pick guard and stuff. But it's a relatively plain, transparent black top. It's kind of a smoky color. But that looks like it just might be an ebony fretboard. So we're kind of like within uh, Les Paul Standard territory or Les Paul Studio. Just depends if you look at the neck or the body. But then when I flipped it over to the back, I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, I need to tell people about this. That is a beautifully figured mahogany back. And then you get to the neck photo. Apparently something's gone on to dull the finish. I'm not quite sure what this photo is showing us. It's kind of hard to tell. Like, is there actually streaking within here? Is that just a reflection or what's going on? But even the mahogany neck has figuring. It's either that or it's actually maple and it was just stained mahogany, but the wood grain looks like mahogany and you don't find that too often. Yeah, this definitely is looking mahogany to me, but it was built in 2011, judging by the serial number. Just regular Grover tuners. This guy's really kind of shooting himself in the foot, not having good back shots. 
because they're all so close up, nobody can see it and appreciate it for what it is because that's the true money maker and what makes this guitar special. In fact, that should just be his leading photo and it'd probably be sold. So basically his story, as he understands it, is he, he talks about the made to measure program of the time the original buyer selected all the features and he kind of got this weird thing. My best guess as to what this is, is one of the employee guitars because generally you don't find custom USAs. Like if you're gonna custom order something, it's gotta be a custom shop. The USA is a production facility. They're not doing one-offs normally. But this looks like somebody that, I think if they, after they work at Gibson for what, 10, maybe 20 years, I'm not 100% sure, but they get to like design their own guitar. So this guy likely, you know, kept this wood back for this special occasion. But there we go, P90 in the neck and a P100 in the bridge. It's kind of cool for 1800 bucks. I mean, the figured back and the neck alone pretty well makes that worth the price, but I'm sure a lot of people wish that it had binding on the neck. That way it could technically be a standard and have a Mother of Pearl Gibson logo. Like if I was gonna spec something out and custom order it in case that is what this was, why not at least go for the Gibson Mother of Pearl logo? Like I can understand the binding because some guys just don't like the binding, but not getting a little blingage on the headstock? I don't know about that one. But I'd say anywhere between 14 to 2,000, super fair game. So I don't see this one lasting long. All right, troglodytes, thank you for tuning in today. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll catch you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.